permanent modifications to your RV, even if it's a little bit new. Should you do it, what did we do, and what does it look like now after it's been a little while? <laughs> That's what we're talking about in today's Real Talk Tuesday, so stay tuned. Welcome back to No Ordinary Path. I am Kristen, my husband John is a travel nurse, and we live in this 37 foot travel trailer with our three kids and a dog. And we have been on the road for almost three years, traveling coast to coast, all over the place, following his jobs, which has been an amazing journey. And if you're brand new to our channel, we're so glad that you are here. Please like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all of our videos coming up. On Tuesdays, we do these Real Talk Tuesdays. They're more informative. On weekends, we share our story, which is kind of our fun adventures. Tonight, I'm gonna talk about some renovations that we've done and modifications that we've done. These are the big changes that we made to our RV. We were terrified to make any changes whatsoever. We were so caught up in like, oh, well, it's gonna harm the resale value. Well, let me tell you, as soon as you drive a brand new RV off the lot, you're gonna lose 25% of the value anyways, like even if you don't make any changes to it. And if you plan on living in it full time, my advice, make it yours, make it your home. Like this is your home, so make it yours. Now, obviously if you're buying a really fancy luxury RV, that's really nice inside. When you buy it, you might not wanna make a lot of alterations in it if you are planning to sell it after a short period of time. But for us, we really have enjoyed making this our home. With that, I'm going to tell you six things that we modified in our rig, starting with Paint. I think paint is the biggest one because so many RVs come in that really dark brown wood that's not even like pretty wood, it's like press board. Ours wasn't, just look. Here's, here's some of the original footage from our original tour. This is our living space. Painting it white made an insane difference. It immediately made the place feel really, like much bigger inside, as big as an RV can feel. drawbacks to painting it white. Now, I know this is a really popular thing to do, but it does get dirty extra quick. And I know that the brown got dirty too, but you can really see it on white. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And ours is maybe not holding up the best. This is what it looks like two years later. There's, there's scratches and it really immediately it started obtaining these scratches, especially on the doors and where there was a lot of wear. And we just, we could go back in and sand it and repaint it, we just haven't. And so over time it does start to look a little drab. Hello, hi. Here is our door. I'm gonna show you like we've got spots like this. This is wear and tear right here. Um, this whole, look at this, look at this. You can see it's it's peeling all on the inside of my door there. Uh, the cabinets are not as, as crazy, but the doors are definitely rough. We had to have our slide fixed, and so we have this place where they just popped it off, and they obviously don't fix that part of it when they put it back on. They don't repaint it, so it looks kind of crummy. So this is where they popped it off, and that's the crack. And then this just ripped off, just peeled right off. Up here on the corner, you can see it's just kind of peeling off, and that's just wear and tear there as well. And then if we have things jostle when we're moving, it nicks the paint. One that's really bad though is the teal. I love this color. I love the pop of color, but because of where the cabinet doors are situated, they rub on stuff a lot, and it just rubs the paint right off, which is interesting because I don't remember it rubbing the original like wood stuff down, but it, it rubs the paint bad. This is another spot that's just worn. Um, this is where we keep our plates, and so it's pretty badly worn. I mean, on the plus side, it can totally look, be like an antique look. 
if you're going for that. It does help make it look nice from afar, but if you get up close, it's not that nice. <laughs> the next one is wallpaper and tile. You'll see behind me, this where the fruit basket is, this is actually just like peel and stick wallpaper. It's amazing. And it's actually a really good choice to use if you don't want to alter your RV because you want to resell it the way that it was. You can just peel that puppy right off and you'll never even know that it was there. So I really like that and I, I call it a major alteration because it just makes it look so much different. And the same with, we have tile over here, you can kind of see it right here. Peel and stick tile, uh, it's still here. This is also two years old now. This is yellowing really bad on the bottom and the whole thing really, you can't tell right now, but it's yellowed. The whole thing has like a kind of a yellow feel to it. You'll also notice it's coming undone here. It wrinkles a little bit. I'm sure that we can fix that, but this is right by where we cook all the time. So I'm not surprised that there's some stuff there. It's also kind of peeling a little bit in the seams. Despite the wear and tear on the tiles, I'm actually really glad that we have it. It looks a lot nicer than just the wall did behind it. And it was, I'd say it's a pretty good upgrade, but it is one that you might have to replace over time. And our bedroom, it did start peeling off of the wall there. It's also the, a wall that gets really warm because it's it's the nose of the rig. So the wallpaper gets really warm and it and it does kind of tend to peel. But I I fixed that with a stick of my kid's glue, <laughs> like a glue stick, like a school glue stick. And it has not fallen off since. And the next thing that we did also around the same time but we've changed it a few times since then, was we ripped out our booth. Now this immediately got rid of some of the beds that were available in our RV, but we never used them for that purpose. And if we were going to resell it right away, we maybe wouldn't have done that because more beds usually equals more value. But in this case, this is our home and that is our kitchen. And like, who has a bed in their kitchen? As you can see, we now have a table back here. We have a bench and we have some stackable chairs that we put around this table. This is the second table we've gone through. The first one was Ikea and we've got some footage of that one. We put this Ikea table together. A lot of people like it and use it and that's fabulous. It just didn't work well for us. It was heavy, it was bulky, it was hard to move around and we thought that we would use utilize the ability to fold it up more often and we just we just really didn't and then when it was all the way folded out we couldn't all sit around it because the drawers in the middle got in the way of our knees when we ripped out that booth we saved one of the square cabinet pieces and we cut a hole in the wall in our bathroom and we put that on some hinges and initially it was a place where we could put a crate that had like toys in it the beach toys or outdoor toys it was something that we could have that was easily accessible from the outside of the RV because that's our spare bathroom and you can access it from outside. The problem was, is it was really difficult to get that cart crate in and out of that hole. And so what it has now become is a laundry chute. Speaking of laundry, John is doing some laundry right now in our spin dryer, in our spin wash and dryer. <laughs> and it- I'm watching our video. Watching our video from <laughs> last week, yay! And we hang our laundry up in our spare bathroom here. We, I'm gonna move them out of the way so that I can show you this thing. Uh, so this is the, the old door and it's, it's literally a hole, you guys. And this is where our laundry is currently. Through there goes into the kids' room as well. So you can access the laundry from here or from the other side. Okay, the next thing that we did was a little bit more recently, about nine months or so ago, we took down our oven hood, which we found out vented to nowhere. It, it didn't have a vent at all. It was, it was a fake vent. I don't know why. It was crazy. And it was, it was right above our cooking area, right above our oven and our stove top. And it was this hood that came out and protruded out into, you know, the room a little bit. And we couldn't figure out the purpose for it. So we got rid of it and it immediately made the room look a lot bigger. We later found out that it did serve a little bit of a purpose in trapping grease. 
Now it didn't vent anywhere, but all the grease would get caught up underneath the hood and it was nasty under there. We would go through and wipe it down occasionally, but I didn't really worry about it. Whereas now underneath my cabinet, I have to frequently clean it and our fantastic fan, which is right here, sucks in a lot of the air when we're cooking and pulls the grease up to it also so we have to constantly clean it so it is a little bit frustrating that i have to wipe down grease all the time it was a little bit of a trade-off but i love the open space that it gave us and it didn't vent anywhere so we didn't really need it right the final thing number six is not really a major renovation per se but it is a permanent alteration and that is screwing things directly into your outside walls. We were really afraid to put anything into our walls other than like putting command stickers on there. And we do still use command stickers, but we were having a lot of hard time with them and coming in and out of humidity, high humid areas, they would just peel off of the walls. But we opted to screw certain things into our wall. Like we have a, a book caddy over here on the wall. We have a leash hook that has become a catch-all for all kinds of things to hang on and that is screwed into the wall. We've also screwed into the wall a shelf for Ethan in his bed and it's has, I mean, it is a sturdy shelf. Through all of that, we have not put any major holes or had anything major happen to the wall itself, but there are certain things that are just secured better when they're permanently attached. So those are the six things. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. And as you know, if you've seen some of our recent videos, you know, we've been going through a lot of wear and tear in this RV. It is an ultralight. And we knew when we purchased it, before I get any hate, we knew that it was an ultralight and not made for full-time living. When we purchased it, we had a half-ton truck and we thought we were going to travel for one year and we needed to get something that was in our price range and also in our weight range and could fit our whole family comfortably and this is what we came up with so three years later we feel like she's held up pretty well given that she's an ultralight trailer but she has got a lot of wear and tear on her if we could do this whole thing again i really think that we would go with a used rv we'd probably go with a newer but used something that when we got it we would not feel guilty at all about renovating or changing anything in it to make ours and go from there because having a brand new rv first of all you're losing so much depreciation right off the bat but second of all you're i don't know about you guys but we were just scared to change things and we waited for a long time before we made some changes that we wish we would have done sooner so glad that you are here we hope that you are following and subscribe to us check us out on tiktok also or instagram or facebook and we'll see you out there this is what it looks like now john's doing laundry and the air conditioner is on because we're in las vegas and it's hot and this is what our rv looks like right now